Well, folks, apparently there's a person named Taylor Swift and she's dating some dude named Travis Kelsey and I'm supposed to care. Uh, why do people care about Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey? I mean, I just don't understand. So this is eating up my Twitter feed. Every Instagram post is about Taylor Swift and, and Travis Kelsey. And I don't understand why I'm supposed to care. I don't. I mean, Taylor Swift is famous for literally writing a song about how she has a giant list of men that she has dated. So this is another person on the list of men that she is dating and they're not going to end up married. I mean, I hate to break it to you. They're not going to. And if I'm wrong, okay, then I will send them a bouquet, bouquet of flowers at their wedding. But so far, she's dated like a thousand men and she's married none of them. And the reason for that is because the prospect of single, free and clear Taylor dating men is very lucrative. You know what happens when she gets married? She loses money. Okay, our incentive laden society has basically decided that women who settle down and have a happy marriage are less valuable, at least when it comes to pop culture, than women who date a lot. Now, maybe that's because there is the allure of, well, she's a, maybe she'll date you next. She's not going to date you, bro. Not going to happen. So what do you care? And as far as this sort of, well, she is with a football player and it's the all-American couple. It's a, it's a singer and a football player and wow. I mean, first of all, the fact that the NFL is falling for this, it's going to be super fun when she dumps him and then she turns out to be like a, a basketball fan or something. That's going to that's gonna be amazing. But also, the fact that we're all supposed to pin our hopes for the romantic future on, on Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey seems perverse to me. I don't know why in the world anyone would would like form their idea of romance around Taylor Swift, who again has dated everyone from like Jake Gyllenhaal to John Mayer to the every member of the Backstreet Boys, some members of the Backstreet I don't, I don't know what the story is. In any case, entire piece in the Washington Post today, Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey, and a monoculture yearning for romance. Travis isn't quite right. Kel Swift isn't much better. Travlore is a pharmaceutical jingle waiting to happen. Tasty is nonsense. Celsi sounds like an off-brand antacid. So what should we call them? That paragraph was a test. Surely you understand it provided you are part of the human population. But for those of you who for whatever reason aren't, Taylor Swift showed up at a football game to cheer on Chiefs star tight end Travis Kelsey. After a week of national tittering and wishing and hoping that these two might be right for each other, Swift showed up again Sunday night at MetLife Stadium for Sunday night football. The sight of the planet's most famous pop star jumping and yelling, let's effing go, as one of the NFL's most talented and charismatic players scores a touchdown would cause a commotion if we were living in normal times. But it's 2023, so this budding romance story has consumed every corner of the internet, sports media, non-sports media, sports betting apps, cable news segments, memes, and text messages, from dads to daughters announcing, have you seen this? During the September 24th game, Fox announcers gleefully dubbed the Swift-Kelsey pairing as the romance we all need. It feels like it's right for America. Okay, so first of all, I'm just going to point out that Taylor Swift faking enthusiasm for things is part of her brand. And if you watch the MTV Video Music Awards, like any of it, they were playing some of the crappiest music imaginable, and she was smiling and dancing along like she actually cared. So do I actually think that this is a thing? I mean, I understand. It, I hope that the NFL is paying her royally for this. On Sunday, NBC just as eagerly panned a Swift watching the game in a suite with her slew of celebrity friends, including Blake Lively, Ryan Reynolds, Sophie Turner, Sabrina Carter, Carpenter, and Tony Porowski and Hugh Jackman. Swift spent time during the first half talking with Brittany Mahomes, the wife of Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes, and shared a hug with Kelsey's mom, Donna. At one point, commentator Chris Collinsworth dreamily recalled how Swift and Kelsey left Arrowhead Stadium together September 24th in Kelsey's convertible, saying it had to be the most freeing thing Taylor Swift has done in 20 years. Um, That's just... Uh, okay, call me when they get married. Call me when they get married. Because again, Taylor Swift faking enthusiasm... I find her completely inauthentic, by the way. But Taylor Swift faking enthusiasm for football while she, uh, while she cheers for Travis Kelsey... And elevating the NFL, this it feels like a sales ploy. Sales of, of Kelsey's jersey have risen about 400%. This is gasoline thrown on a fire. His fan with her fan base, said Sunday Night Football coordinating producer Rob Hyland. Okay, so let's just be real about this. His fan base is not even remotely her fan base, and we all know that. But it's the, the fact that this is getting like wall-to-wall -wall coverage shows how starved we are for anything remotely like a communal sense in the United States. Like, what, what exactly do we share? Apparently, what we share is an obsession with, an, with a, an overrated pop star and a tight end for the Kansas City Chiefs. That is, a, that, that is what truly brings America together. Well, if that's what brings us Amer Americans together, I, I have some bad news for you, gang. It ain't going to be sufficient. You know, a company is looking out for you and they actually upgrade your service and don't charge you for it. This is great news for new and current Pure Talk customers. Pure Talk 
Just added data to every plan, and they include a mobile hotspot. No price increase whatsoever. If you've considered Pure Talk before, but you haven't made the switch, take a look one more time. For just 20 bucks a month, you'll get unlimited talk, text, and now 50% more 5G data plus their new mobile hotspot. This is why I love Pure Talk. They're veteran-owned. They only hire the best customer service team located right here in the United States. Most families are saving almost a grand a year while enjoying the most dependable 5G network in America. There's a reason I take all my calls with Pure Talk. Remember, you vote with how you spend your cash. Stop supporting woke wireless companies that hate your guts. When you go to puretalk.com slash Shapiro, you'll save an additional 50% off your first month because they actually value you. That's puretalk.com slash Shapiro. They have one of the best tower networks in America. I'm sure a tower network with big guys get the same coverage, less cost, company that doesn't hate you. What do you have to lose? Nothing. Go to puretalk.com slash Shapiro. And again, save an additional 50% off your very first month of coverage. That's puretalk dot com slash Shapiro Pure Talk Wireless for Americans by Americans. Let us talk about living a healthy lifestyle. So I'm on the road a lot means I'm not really getting as many fruits and vegetables as I normally would because I got to say the restaurants here are unbelievable. With that said, the balance of nature fruits and veggies that I rely on every day are more and more important. They're a great way to make sure you're getting essential nutritional ingredients every single day. Through Balance of Nature's advanced cold vacuum process, the vitamins, minerals, and phytonutrients of the fruits and veggies are preserved. So you get that vital nutrition in every capsule. Balance of Nature is a whole food supplement with no additives, fillers, extracts, synthetics, pesticides, or added sugar. The only thing in their capsules is pure fruits and veggies. Balance of Nature sent a bunch of their product down to the studio for my team to try. Everybody loves them. Producer Zach brought his Balance of Nature fruit and veggie capsules here to Israel. He takes them daily. I've been taking them as well. They're kosher, so I can. Head on over to balanceofnature.com. Use promo code Shapiro for 35% off your first order as a preferred customer. That's balanceofnature.com. Promo code Shapiro for 35% off your first preferred order. And again, it's it's going to be great for you. It's going to make you feel better. Go check them out right now. Balanceofnature.com and get 35% off that first preferred order. Donald Trump yesterday went to court in Manhattan. According to the New York Times, he detoured from the campaign trail on Monday to attend the opening of the civil trial in the New York Attorney General's fraud case against him as his political team seeks to turn the spectacle into a rallying cry for supporters. Now, Trump hasn't been in the headlines for at least a couple of weeks about his legal travails. Every time he is, it boosts him in the ratings, which presumably is why he showed up in Manhattan. He didn't have to show up in Manhattan. Again, this is the bizarre politics of the moment. Trump right now is trying to head off at the pass any possible consolidation of the rest of the 2024 field. So his team has already come out and said that they want to nix any possible future debates inside the Republican Party, even though he's not taking place because he doesn't want any attention on any other candidate. Also, he's now showing up in court as like a campaign ploy. Now, two things, as always, can be true at once. One, Donald Trump is being absolutely railroaded in this New York case. He really is. No one was damaged. No one was damaged in New York. The lenders are not suing him. The people who did business with him are not suing him. The state of New York is not even alleging that they had losses because of him. Instead, the state of New York is alleging that he engaged in a pattern of fraudulent behavior that damaged no one. And there's and they are grabbing his businesses in New York and taking control of them to the tune of two hundred fifty million dollars in liability based on no damages, which is crazy. Again, if let's say that you and I go into a mortgage arrangement and I say to you, listen, I say my house is worth twice what it's worth. And you kind of know that's true. But you also know that I'm good for my debt. And you also know that it's good to be in business with me. So you give me the loan. Now, you're not damaged. I'm not damaged. Is that bad behavior? Sure, it's bad. Is that fraudulent behavior? I mean, according to the law in New York, that'd be fraudulent behavior. Is that something the state can punish? Who's the victim? How many crimes does the state punish that are, that are truly victimless in the sense that everybody involved knows exactly what's going on and it's a regular part of the business? And if it is that they, they go after people, it can't be that they only go after Trump for this. Like, show me some precedent of how often this law is used in the absence of any damages even alleged. But so so that that is all true. The other thing that is true is that Donald Trump is using this for political purposes. So every time he goes to court, he knows that the American public, at least on the right side of the aisle, rallies to his defense because we all see that it's BS. And the way that the right rallies to his defense is not by contributing to his legal fund. Instead, the way that the right, right rallies to his defense is by saying he should be the nominee, which, again, is a very weird form of rallying to his defense. Because I can believe two things. One that he's being railroaded. And two, this does not make him stronger as a candidate against Joe Biden because my chief priority is not using my vote as, as some sort of loyalty pledge to Donald Trump. My chief priority is using my vote to defeat Joe Biden. So what I'm looking at is who is most likely to beat Biden like a drum. And that involves making Biden the issue because Biden is the issue. Biden is not even alive. He has terrible policies. I and mean, we'll talk about some, the fallout from some of those policies in a moment. If we're talking about Donald Trump's legal issues, you know what we're not talking about, as I've said a thousand times, Joe Biden. In any case, Trump showed up. His son, Eric, also showed up. He was joined by several of his political aides, including Walt Nauda, his co-defendant in the federal case accusing him of mishandling classified documents. 
So here was Donald Trump talking about, uh, talk, I mean, he, he says the quiet power out loud. The, the thing you have to love about Trump is that he's absolutely transparent in every way. Here he was saying the quiet part out loud that, that he's basically there for the polls. And I don't think the people of this country are going to stand for it. If I weren't leading in all the polls or if I weren't running, I wouldn't have any of these cases. I wouldn't be seeing you this morning, but I'll be seeing a lot of you because this is a horrible thing that's happening to our country and we've got to get it straightened away. So we'll go in and see our rogue judge and we'll listen to this man. And uh, I think most people get it. People are getting it. I can tell you the voters getting it because every time they give me a fake indictment, I go up in the polls and that's never happened before. But this is a disgrace. And you ought to go after this attorney general because she's turning off everybody from coming in. You know, I don't know if you take a look at the outflow of business. Businesses are fleeing New York. He's right about all of this, by the way. And it's also true that he is um, that he is correct about the fact that if he were not a Republican candidate again, they would have left him alone. I mean, he would, all these real estate deals that they're accusing him of falsifying. He's been a real estate magnate in New York since like he was doing movies with Macaulay Culkin. So, I mean, this, this, it's an absurdity. And then Trump continues. He says, this is just a continuation of the greatest witch hunt. Uh, again, not wrong. This is a continuation of the single greatest witch hunt of all time. We have a rogue judge who rules that properties are worth a tiny fraction, one one hundred, a tiny fraction of what they actually are. We have a racist attorney general who's a horror show who ran on the basis that she was going to get Trump before she even knew anything about me. She used this to run for governor. She failed in her attempt to run for governor. She had virtually no polling. She came back and she said, well, now I'll go back to get Trump again. And this is what we have. It's a scam. It's a sham. Okay. Again, all very true. All of that is true. It is also true that Democrats are itching to talk about this stuff literally all the time. It is what they wish to talk about all the time. And so Donald Trump talking about it is not particularly beneficial to Republicans in general. I mean, this is this is the big problem here. It also happens to be that in other legal cases, things are probably going to get worse for Trump, not better. According to CNN, the Fulton County District Attorney's Office has now issued a subpoena to former New York Police Commissioner Bernie Carrick to testify in the first trial later this month in the case stemming from election subversion plots in Georgia. According to his lawyer, Carrick's lawyer is demanding that his client be granted immunity in exchange for testifying, pointing out that prosecutors indicted, indicated in the indictment that Carrick was a co-conspirator in the case. He's not named in the indictment, but he is considered co-conspirator number five. So basically, the idea here is that Carrick would be granted immunity in return for testifying against Donald Trump. This is one of the big problems that Trump has. And this is why the RICO case in Georgia is dangerous for Trump is when you wrap in a bunch of other people surrounding Trump and they don't have anybody paying their legal bills, then the temptation is going to be to cut a deal with the Fulton County prosecutors, get immunity and then testify against Trump. This is leaving aside the documents case in Florida. All these legal issues are going to stack up against Trump and Trump championing them in the primaries to elevate him to the nomination. If, if he thinks he's going to be able to turn off that spigot and not talk about this stuff in the general, that's wrong. I mean, this is going to be a chief issue in the general election. And it may be the only thing that can save Biden because Biden is struggling out there. And th this is you know, between this and, and Trump continuing to, to you know, do what he can to alienate suburban women. I just, does he have a path against Biden? Sure, he has a path against Biden because Biden is deeply unpopular. There are a lot of people who might not show up for Biden because they just don't like Joe Biden very much. And because a lot of people know, we all know in our bones, he is not going to serve out a second term and Kamala Harris will be president if Joe Biden is reelected. All that may be true, but it seems to me that if you can bet on a horse that is not weak, I mean, that, that would be better. It seems to me that if you're going to bet on a candidate, you don't want to bet that the other guy's just going to fall down on the job. You want to bet on somebody who can beat him when he's at his strongest. And right now, I'm not sure that that's what Republicans are doing. Uh, over the weekend, for example, Donald Trump spent the weekend like dropping lines mocking Paul Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi's husband at the California GOP meeting. Now, this is the kind of stuff that gets laughs inside a room because he's joking. But also, is it the kind of stuff that is going to drive independence and uh, suburban women back into his camp? I, I don't see how. Together, we will take on the ultra left wing liars, losers, creeps, perverts and freaks who are devouring the future of this state like a swarm of locusts. And we'll stand up to crazy Nancy Pelosi who ruined San Francisco. 
How's her husband doing, by the way? Anybody know? And she's against building a wall at our border, even though she has a wall around her house, which obviously didn't do a very good job. I mean, I don't know what Paul Pelosi has to do with anything. That, that sort of stuff gets played in ads. Right? The entire Biden case is going to be the Donald Trump is a nefarious character. That's going to be the entire case for his reelect. Nothing about Joe Biden. Nothing about how he's a good president. Nothing. That's all it's going to be. And and the fact that 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 Trump is, is he can't make an affirmative case that actually draws people back to him personally. Again, the people who love him, love him. And we're not worried about those people. We're worried about the people who don't love him. Are they going to turn out and vote for him or at the very least stay home and not vote for Biden? Uh, that, that is a risky play. Are you tired of the lies and the twist of the mainstream media talking points? Yeah, me too. Join me in my newest series, Fact, where I dismantle and bring truth to this tiring mainstream agenda.